Hi guys, this is Sean Church for Fastune, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about setting up your boost control tables for your Subaru, uh, be it a WRX, STI, Forester XT, using the Cobb Access Port, Race Tuner, and uh, Pro Tuner software. Now, a lot of guys when they go in and look at a boost uh, table, and, and what we're showing here right now is the boost target table for a, a 05 STI. A lot of guys when they do this are going to simply go in and put in what they would like to see. From the car. So a lot of times what you'll end up seeing is, is somebody will put a table in that looks uh, something like this, for example, you know, 17 pounds flat across the board, and maybe they'll taper it down a little bit right here. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the car to hit 17 pounds as early as possible and then hold it there. But when you're doing this, especially on a stock turbo, you have to keep in mind what the turbo is capable of doing. And if you try to hit boost levels that aren't attainable, you have to remember that the, the ECU is going to try and compensate to hit those targets even if it can't be reached. And that can have some follow-on effects that can be problematic down the road. For example, let's revert back to our, uh, our stock table here and uh, so we can uh, show what it's going to look like. And you notice that, for example, at 2,600 RPM, we're targeting about 8 pounds of boost. At uh, 3,200 RPM, we're targeting 11 to 12 pounds of boost. 3,600, we're targeting about 13 and then up to 14 and a half. And so what, what we've done here is targeted a very smooth ramp in a boost. And if we were to actually look at what kind of boost levels that the car can, can hit uh, on the road, even say a high gear, climbing a hill, uh, these values are, are pretty representative of what we're going to see. It's going to be hard for us to make more than 7 or 8 pounds of boost at 2,500 RPM. It's going to be hard to make much more than 8 or 9 at 2,600. Now, we do know that we can make a lot more boost from 3,200 on. The turbo is capable of making 17, 18, 19 pounds of boost there. But... The stock, the engineers aren't trying to hit that stock. But what if we were to go through and tell it we wanted to hit 17 pounds at 2,600 RPM? So let's make it 17, 17 pounds everywhere. So what's going to happen now is if we start a, a pull on the freeway in sixth gear at, say, 2,500 RPM, we're going to get into the gas, go full throttle. And the ECU is going to see that we're targeting uh, 17 pounds of boost, but the turbo can't hit that. So let's say we're targeting 17 pounds right here. And... Uh, we're on the freeway cruising along at 2,400, 2,500 RPM, and we hit the gas. Now, what's going to happen, uh, let's say we're in fifth gear, sixth gear, uh, as soon as we hit 2,600 RPM, the ECU is now trying to hit 17 pounds of boost. But realistically, even with a stock turbo, that's not going to happen. And if we have an aftermarket turbo, it's certainly not going to happen. If we have a bigger turbo, it's going to take longer to spool up. But the ECU doesn't know the turbo isn't capable of hitting that boost level. So it goes back, and it's going to look at our wastegate. And it's going to say, well, I'm allowed up to up to 32% here or 25% here. And it hits 25%. It's still not hitting the boost level. Well, then what happens is we're going to go in and we're, start going, to, we're going to start doing compensation using the turbo dynamics. We're going to start adding in duty cycle. Okay, we're going to add, we're off. Let's say we're only hitting, we're targeting 17 pounds. We're only hitting 12 pounds. We're going to add another 1.6% duty cycle there. So the ECU may add 2, 3, 4, 5% more to the wastegate duty cycle to try and hit that. So now we're hitting 30%, okay, on our wastegate duty cycle, but we're still not hitting 17 pounds of boost. So the, 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 the boost controller, the ECU is trying to get that solenoid to hit that, that 17 pounds, but it's not happening. But now let's see what's, what happens when we get back up to, let's say we hit 3,200 RPM. Now the turbo is actually capable of hitting 17 pounds of boost. But we're already adding in extra duty cycle, right, because we couldn't hit the 17 pounds lower. And now if we've done our dyno tuning right, we know that we, we've set up a proper wastegate duty cycle there at 3,200. We're, we're, we're targeting 32% duty cycle. Well, normally that's going to get us 17 pounds. But what happens is we have the extra 5% already added in. So now we're going to see the, the ECU is going to add in duty cycle as we get to that 3,200 RPM point. And it's going to take what it's been adding in before and add that to it. So now we're going to have too much wastegate duty cycle, and we get an overshoot. And this is the most common problem you hear from people with their Subarus, is that the car works great first, second, third gear, but on the freeway in fourth gear or fifth gear, when I hit it, it overboosts and, and shuts off, or it cuts off on me. And usually the number one problem with that is that not only do you have maybe the improper wastegate duty cycle, but you don't have the proper boost target. And if, so if you're targeting too much boost before the turbo can actually spool it up, then the, the ECU is going to try and compensate. And if it's compensating, that compensation will continue to apply once you get into a range where the turbo is operating efficiently and can make the boost you targeted. And then you get some overshoot. Now, another common problem with overshoot is if we go back and look at our wastegate duty cycles, is to add in too much duty cycle here at partial throttle, okay, and, all, and also too much boost target there. You notice, for example, that when we're at 50% throttle, we're only targeting about 9 pounds of boost. Well, a lot of guys will show you a table that will look like this, 
say 17 pounds from 60% throttle to 100% throttle. Well, what happens now is that as I'm ramping up my throttle position, and if I, especially if I have too much duty cycle in this range as well, well now I'm not hitting the boost level, and I've allowed a lot of duty cycle there. So now the ECU is going to add all that duty cycle in, and then as I get to full throttle and the turbo begins to spool, again, I'll get overshoot. So it's very important to make sure that you've got a smooth transition on your wastegate here to make sure that you don't have too much duty cycle at part throttle and that you don't have too much boost target at part throttle. Because if you do, you're likely to get overshoot situations. And that's not going to happen on the dyno. It's not going to happen when you're going through the gears at full throttle shift in a red line. It's going to happen when you're cruising on the freeway and you go to pass somebody or you're modulating the throttle coming out of a corner and then you floor it once you get once you get hooked up and then you get an overboost situation. So remember, to target your boost curve to mimic what the turbo can actually do. If it takes the if the turbo doesn't spool up to 4,000 RPM, don't command high boost levels at 3,000 RPM. It's not going to do you any good. It could potentially result in overshoot. At the same time, make sure that you have a smooth progression so that you're not targeting high boost levels at moderate throttle levels. You know, at 80% and above throttle, yeah, target your maximum boost, but then taper it down as you reduce throttle uh, below that point. And while you taper down the boost target, make sure you also taper down wastegate duty cycle at those as well. By having a smooth wastegate duty cycle curve and a smooth boost curve that mimics what the turbo is capable of doing, you're going to have much more effective boost control, less chance of an overshoot, less chance of an, of a, of an overboost condition, and you're not going to find yourself getting a boost cut at exactly the point when you want a maximum power and torque. All right, that's it for today. If you want to learn more, be sure to come check out the Fast Tune class at www.fasttune.com.